Hi, my name's Leo and I'm a boat builder and a sailor. Back in 2017, I bought a very old and quite famous wooden sailing boat for the price of $1. And since then, I've been rebuilding that boat from the very keel up uh, with the help of a lot of amazing people with the intention of eventually launching it and sailing it back to the UK where it was originally built. Recently, I've noticed a lot of people wondering about how things are progressing uh, with the interior layout, the accommodation inside the boat. So in this video, we're going to do a big tour of the inside of the boat, the outside of the boat and show uh, how things are going and all the different jobs which are going on right now. So this is the upper floor of my workshop and um, give you a little tour of this area. This is our tea break area. This is the ladder to my office, door to outside. We're going to go through this door, which should take us straight to the boat, through this pretty cool walkway. Oh, look who it is. Wow, Gimbal Town. <laughs> what are you up to there, Patrick? Just cutting out this soul hatch. Oh, cool. <laughs> Holy smokes, that's cool, dude. There's Clifton over there. But we're going to actually start our tour down below uh, on the underside of the boat and uh, look at some of the new toys we've got down there. So go down these stairs. <laughs> Well, not a great deal has changed down here, except now when you look up at the boat, you can see the outside rounded over edge of the covering board and the bulk staunches above, and I think they look really good. Um, we've got the ballast keel down here still, needs a little bit more fairing and some fairing blocks put in and painting and so on. Uh, but over here, we do have something pretty fun. We've got a new neighbor here, of course, a uh, pretty cool motorboat actually, but under Tally Ho, this is Tally Ho's main battery bank. Um, these are eight uh, lithium iron phosphate batteries, 200 amp hours each. There's a lot of power potential in here. Um, they're 25 volts um, and they're going to power Tally Ho's diesel electric hybrid motor. Um, lithium iron phosphate, this chemistry is the most stable chemistry available, much more stable than your standard lithium iron batteries. So. Uh, much better for a boat where you really, really, really don't want a fire. So these are actually really safe, um, really good batteries. So exciting to have those and looking forward to getting them in the boat. So I'm working on milling up old planks to make trim pieces, the sideboards and headboards for bunks. Uh, we are going to mill them up, plug all the bung holes and such, and then epoxy them together, give them a shaping and round over sanding, and then mount them. Right, well, we're in my office now in the loft workshop and I'm looking at the accommodation drawings, the layout for the interior of the boat. Um, and we're gonna start by checking out some of the work that Patrick has been doing in the forepeak. In that area, he has been making the bulkhead that forms the wall of the head and he's been making the sole boards, which are the floorboards of the boat. Right, well, while that work is going on down there, uh, I'm going to tell you about the company that sponsored this video. Uh, and what that means is that they have given me loads of money, uh, not loads of money, but enough money to pay for at least two of those fancy ass batteries uh, underneath the boat. All right, dear viewer, tell me this. Do you ever find yourself surfing the interwebs for something so dodgy, so shameful, 
so embarrassing that you don't want anybody to know about it because I sure as hell do. Uh, hmm. If, like me, you don't want anyone to know what you're doing online, you might want to try Surfshark, the sponsor of today's video. Surfshark is a VPN, which is a virtual private network. And what that means is that it hides all your data that's going in and out of your computer through your internet connection. So in practice, that keeps it all safe and secure. It also means you can actually change your virtual location. So for example, I could actually browse as if my computer was in the UK and catch up with all those great educational programs I've been missing. Don't take sweets from strangers. If you want to try Surfshark, uh, you can use my special code, TallyHo. Um, if you enter that, you get 83% off and you get an extra three months for three, for three, three months for free as well. And uh, thank you Surfshark for sponsoring this video and for paying for a couple of those sweet batteries. Hey, thanks, bud. What you talking about? Midtown Morning Glories of Sacramento, California, yeah. helping the helping the houseless. Wait, and uh, are, they, are they paying for this? No, not at all. No, no. Well, <laughs> I actually paid for this shirt. Oh, I just got that much love for the cause. And what's going on in here? I'm uh, so I got the I'm making the sole for the four peak here, and um, I am making some patterns for removable removable parts of the sole so there's the step up here which creates kind of a weird sole bearer situation so i've been kind of making these uh, sole bearers out of purple heart this is the bulkhead to the to the head the head bulkhead the bulkhead head yeah, so we've been working on cutting out the hatch openings uh each hatch on deck is going to get a sill placed underneath it um, that borders the borders the hatch it kind of makes a little margin board what's seen at deck level is this cove and then there's a rabbit right here and then this top tier and our cabin sides or our hatch sides come down on top of that um, they'll wrap it over this um, this has a slight slope to it to encourage water to drain out if if ever water makes its way up there a lot of these house sides um, or a couple of them are actually going to be removable i mocked up this uh preliminary uh miter joint for our sills um so they all have you know um kind of a half lap miter here uh at the same same with the glue joint in our um sill glue up we wanted to hide this joint so this is down below below deck also there's no exposed end grain um and then our coves meet you know pretty nicely hopefully we can do it uh, uh, at least this nice maybe nicer on our finished pieces so Captain. hi yeah what am i telling you about using your hand to hit things I only do it when there's a camera present. Oh yeah? Yeah. Um, strictly for strictly for that. Making sure that I got y'all learned about that. <laughs> um, no indeed. Do not use your carpal tunnel mallet. <laughs> Can you uh tell us what you're doing here? 
I'm checking how good I got this very slight curve on the bottom of these long sills. Um, structural part, it keeps the opening rigid. Uh, there's going to be a lot of force from the corking and the swelling and shrinking of the decking around it. This is a really long opening. Yeah, I've been working on these bunks for the past few months, uh, and uh, the uh, we're also been making the staving, framing, and um, the ceiling was all made, pre-painted, put it in. Yeah, we're we're making bunk boards for these. Not they're not in yet, but they'll they'll, they'll be plenty sturdy with a. Uh, Right now, it's a little bit flexible, and, uh, and it, it also needs to be higher to uh, the whole mattress and the people in place. So, yeah. so right now, we're right up at the bow of the boat, right up the front. Uh, you can see there's the storage locker, and then after that, this is going to be the chain locker, eventually, where all the anchor chain will be stored, come down through deck. And then where I'm standing right now, uh, there's going to be eventually a workbench here. Uh, Richard's going to start working on that soon. And then on this side, of course, we've got our bunks. We've got a double bunk on top and a single bunk down below. On this side, this is going to be a big locker um, with shelves and drawers and things in it. And then, of course, the bulkhead that Patrick put in for the head. And this space is the head, shower and toilet. When we go through this opening, this is gonna be where the mast will be, coming down through this uh, this octagonal hole in the uh, mast partners here. And now I'm stepping into the galley and the saloon. And we really haven't done much in this area, mainly because um, we need to get the water tanks in, which are gonna go below the sole before we can really put anything else in. Up above me, Clifton, is working on these hatch sills so these eventually are going to uh, support the skylight hatch which is going to go above here now if we keep going further aft we're going to see some of the work that young george has been doing so this is the wet locker here main companionway stairs coming down and then in the master cabin here or the stateroom if you like this is the bunk side or the headboard of uh, this double berth and this is what George has been making out of the original teak planking that came off of this boat. We've got the same thing in the pilot berth and so Richard did a lot of work on this berth itself including with all this structural stuff here uh, which is going to take the door to the engine room and again we've got lifting out slats here to have storage underneath ceiling board up the outside to stop your stuff falling down in between the frames and George has made this bunk side here again out of the old teak planks obviously if there's very heavy weather or you're actually sailing um, you're gonna there's gonna be leaf offs here bits of fabric which which will tie up and stop you from rolling out if the movement of the 
boat is quite violent, but uh, in calm weather or just at the anchorage, this will give you a little bit of a sort of fence to uh, keep you in this berth. Now, if we go still further aft, uh, this is going to be the engine room, the passageway here into the engine room. Um, and there's been a lot of planning and design work going on in this area, uh, but nothing too much actually has physically changed. Um, and I've just started actually working uh, on this area, the companionway steps and the structure that goes around at the battery box. So we're gonna go and talk about that now. Okay, so this main companionway area, the main entrance into the boat, uh, presents some interesting challenges because uh, the batteries, which we looked at earlier, the best place to store them is going to be underneath the companionway steps or the companionway ladder uh, because we want to keep them all together, we want to keep them low in the boat and basically everywhere else there's going to be too much other stuff. But the other thing which has to be taken into account is getting access to these batteries. Now, if we imagine the batteries are basically in an enclosed sealed locker now between the engine uh, and the companionway steps. Uh, now the side of that locker is actually going to be taken up with controls for battery switches, things like that. So that panel is not going to be easily removable. The best way to get to these batteries is going to be by actually moving the companionway ladder, the companionway steps out of the way. Now this gets kind of complicated because whatever door or enclosure is in the companionway steps has to be completely watertight because it's not uncommon for a wave to come crashing down the companionway and of course we can't have seawater going all over the batteries and their associated electronics. So I've been designing a locker here, a system, a door, a companionway that allows uh, access to the front of the batteries by moving the companionway steps out of the way in such a way that they're kept watertight um, and there's enough space for the batteries under there uh, and the steps work as steps and you don't bang your head too badly uh, on the beams and hatch above. Dude, I'm super late. I gotta yeah. run. Okay. Oh, whoa, holy shit. What is that? Do you need help? No, I got it. It's in. It's done. Okay, so I've just fitted the first parts of the structure of the companionway stairs and the battery locker and it's a little bit hard to describe but essentially the companionway stairs are going to go here and they're going to be the traditional style of stairs with a wide piece on each side and steps in between but they're going to be mounted on panels. So the stairs are going to be in two halves, top half and the bottom half and so the top half uh, will pull out uh, with a panel attached and that will access the batteries and then the bottom half will also pull out if you need to actually get them out. The panels will sit on these pieces here um, and there's going to be a, a gasket there and then on the outside there's a gutter so any water that, that gets around the outside will end up in this gutter run down run through a hole in the soilboard and into the bilge. These rebates at the top here are for a small panel here and then a vertical panel here which will meet up with the uh, big engine bearer down below um, and they'll all be watertight as well and this vertical panel will have electrical components mounted on both sides of it. And on the outboard side of this piece, there's going to be another panel bulkhead sort of thing with um, battery and electrical supply controls on it um, underneath here. And then it'll just be a bit of a bulkhead up to here, up to the doorway, um, and with a post probably on the end. So I know it's probably a little bit hard to visualize, um, but <laughs> over the next few weeks, hopefully this will all actually materialize and make a lot more sense. And I think it's going to work well.
the height is from here to here, uh -huh. across. So I got it marked from the top. The width yep. of the opening for the drawer is right mm -hmm. here. Take, mm -hmm. It's taken from this drawing. Yep. The width is taken here. Oh, there you go. Right here, it's all on the same stick. And are we sure that these two bulkheads are parallel? Uh, no, they're slightly off. And at the, at the bottom here, see this, you look here. You got two marks there. Got two marks. One for this width, and then at the bottom of it, sorry, yeah, on, on the, so slightly longer. This one, this, this bulk is just slightly out of um, plumb. Out of plumb. This one's pretty good, I checked. Well, we got our, uh, our our bench, uh, cabinet, face, called the face frame. Uh, this is the top. It's going to be two drawers here. Now they're going to another piece is going to go in like that. Drawer and a drawer. I'm not sure if you want to make this all one. The shelf. Um. Because I could just put a, a division right here for the drawers. Yeah, I think I'd rather keep. Keep it all open. Well, just that makes it easier yet because I can screw that together and this here I'd have to lap the piece if I you'd wanted to divide that yeah. up. Yeah, no, keep it open then. That's better yeah. anyway. Yeah, I just got some usable space. Yeah. Of course, I used my tick stick. I just measured everything, the heights on the stick so I didn't have to remember it. Uh, the bench area, workbench area, which is going to have a few drawers and some uh, drop-in storage here. We're going to make drawers that go in and then drop down so they don't they don't slide out underway. It's a fun little project, and it's uh, it's getting better because I don't have to bend over in, in a little tiny spot much. Uh, I don't get stuck somewhere. This this bench top's gonna go clear up uh, up into the chain locker there, butt up against that C rail, and continue across here with a hatch. So uh, it'll be a nice little work area, uh, and it'll be heavy duty enough to mount a vice somewhere. Fairing block, pretty much at the end of the ballast keel. You want to fold? Whoa, that thing looks got gimbaled and whoa! You guys can't see, it, but Leo's wiggling his hand all around, but the camera's not moving. <clears throat> uh, yeah, the end of our ballast, <laughs> the end of our ballast keel, um, it doesn't taper out into the end of the actual keel timber. There's uh, about 
40 inches, three and a half feet of uh, timber that needs to get fastened on there. Um, there's a little tenon in the back of the lead, so this will let into that, uh, mortise over it kind of, um, and this will just get lagged up into the, uh, the keel timber. Uh, it'll obviously have some shape to it. This is just my rough piece. So I'm gonna uh, plane it down a little bit and make sure it's square to start. Uh, and then it's got, it's got shapes on all, well, three sides. The, the top's gonna be flat against the keel timber, so. Nice. Yeah. And a wedgie chunk. Did you just write wedgie chunk on that piece of tape? Oh, you just walk right up and look at my weird notes. <laughs> uh, yeah, to distinguish this wedgie chunk from chunk down there, trying to make a plane. Um, so I'll erase those. And what, uh, what with one of these? What is? <laughs> That's a nice eraser. Well, as you can see, there's always a lot of different things going on at once here, and what you saw in this video was only a fraction of the things that happened in the last couple of weeks. But things are going well, things are moving forward. It's really nice to see the interior of the boat starting to come together, and everybody here on the team has been doing great work. So uh, big thanks to them, thanks for watching this video, and a massive, massive thank you to everyone who has uh, donated or otherwise supported this project in any way. It does make a huge difference and it means that we're able to carry on doing this work and I'm able to keep on making these videos. So I really, really appreciate it. And I'll see you next time. Cheers.